Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents, The Current, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I started this project earlier this year. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the current with our guest, Daniel Webb. I'm back. You're back. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, I like to kick off the current episode with this question. Describe your life today. My life today is um, busy. Yeah. And it's good to be busy. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, kind of open. I'm excited for the year. Mm -hmm. And I should be, I think, working a little harder because I got a little wind in my sails. So I mm -hmm. should. But right now it's fun. Mm -hmm. I kind of found this huge community of friends that yeah. I get to just... I went out last night and just ran into comedians. You know what I mean? I was like, hi, 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 yeah. hi. Um, and that's lovely. That's such a lovely thing. Mm -hmm. So I feel um, it's nice to be part of an Austin community. Yeah. And I just am very happy to be busy. Are your projects all comedy? Um, comedy's number one on the list. Uh -huh. I'm trying to develop a couple products related to that. Mm -hmm. um, just loose things that are... A, a little away from just my set. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, music is just a home thing for now. I'm mm -hmm. so tired of dragging my heavy Fender Rhodes out. I'm, I don't ever <laughs> want to move it again. Um, and if I do drag, it's usually when somebody calls. Mm -hmm. I, I never like outwardly book myself. Yeah. I'm just usually booked when one or two drag queens have dropped out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I consider my drag to be part of like, a, a comedic tangent, uh -huh. even though I don't necessarily view like comedy. I mean, drag as comedy yeah. directly. So, mm -hmm. Hi, Miss P Hello, Purrington made her guest yes. appearance. She's like, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. So I heard you were busy. <laughs> um, what I what we teased before, and I'm, I'm, this is why I was asking what kind of projects, because one of the things I stumbled upon is some of your writings with Austin.com. Yes. Is that yes, something yes. that you're still doing? That is one of the things I need to get my butt in gear uh -huh. and just take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. I sort of was doing that as an interview style, and mm -hmm. I need to just expand my brain to just write about Austin. Mm -hmm. Um, I, they kind of, I, steer towards comedy things and stuff yeah. like that just because that's my access mm -hmm. um but it is a good opportunity that i should definitely be utilizing more yeah. um but i also like it to highlight i mean what everybody else is up to mm -hmm. um which is kind of what people did for me you know what i mean people really supported yeah. me and put me out there and i have an opportunity to help mm -hmm. shine whatever little crappy light i have on on people Oh, Daniel. Um, <laughs> sorry. It's that, it's that modest North Texan <laughs> in me. Right. <laughs> so you work at a pretty cool place, and you had one customer that you got an opportunity to kind of do the uh, metaphorical uh, flipping the bird to the state of Texas and how it treats uh, gay and gay rights. Absolutely. Uh, do you want to tell us that story? I do, because uh, I love this story. Yeah. Um, I work at a barbecue restaurant that is internationally famous <laughs> and I, you get to do a lot of things there and I just happen to be working the cash register that uh -huh. day. Um, and, uh, President Obama was in Austin for, I can't remember why. Uh -huh. And, uh, and he's been before and been to like Stubbs barbecue, other mm -hmm. places, you know what I mean? So, um, I do like to preface this with, I was two hours late to work that day <laughs> because of his motorcade oh, traffic. Okay. I was in, I live on 12th Street okay. and I work off of 12th Street. <laughs> oh my God. Two, Two hours. hours. Wow. So it was a strange day, generally speaking. And then it's a busy place. Mm -hmm. So we're just busy, 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 busy. Yeah. Um, and then somewhere I can't one o'clock without any kind of announcement, seven secret service men just walked in with a, a lady with a clipboard uh -huh. and she came right up to me and was like, I need to speak to who's in charge. <laughs> 
And we knew the president was in town yeah. and we knew, you know, he was at the Paramount, which is not far from where we are. Mm-hmm. And I just looked at the guy next to me and we're like, well, this is about to happen. And they, you know, we've got what, 50, 60 people in the, in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And they just told everybody he's coming in. Don't everybody stay where you are. Uh-huh. They security wanded everybody, which was really fun. <laughs> um, patted people down and. It was really interesting to see the buildup uh-huh. because it is Texas and it's a black president yeah. and people are really mean to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in that moment, it was so non-political. Everybody got their phones out. Yeah. Everybody got real quiet. Everybody started trying to position uh-huh. themselves <laughs> so that they could be in line of wherever he yeah. was supposed to go. And then we were still trying to like run business as usual because sure. we're an open restaurant. Uh, and lo and behold, this SUV pulls up and there's, you know, 200 people outside. And then they, you just hear this huge thing of applause. And then in walks President Barack Obama. And he just files through and says, hello, 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 Uh hello, hello. And, and he's ordering food. It's kind of business as usual, Uh very photo oppy. Um, and then there's press everywhere. What in the pictures that came out later, you can't really see how many people were like behind me and around yeah. us. And there's just like they're crawling all over you kind of a thing. And the, the context of this event was that it was the summer that we were having all those orphans showing up at the border. And Rick Perry specifically and Republicans were grandstanding against Obama, trying to make that his problem, Mm -hmm. that we had some border issue and it was the president's fault. Even though Rick Perry had been governor for 12 goddamn years Mm -hmm. and done shit for like securing that. And now he's using it as a political tool against a black president. And I totally think that's what it is. So that was the context of where I was going Mm -hmm. because I didn't like that. I pay way too much attention to politics to know that that is a Washington Republican problem. Why we have, why these Christian sons of bitches are sending orphans back to a troubled country. Um, I don't like that. And slash, there are these brilliant Rick Perry rumors Uh that Rick Perry is gay and Uh who gives a shit if the man is or not. I couldn't care less, but it is hysterical that every time that man ran for re-election, it was, he's gay, he's gay, he's gay, he's gay, he's gay. gay." Hilarious. So that's where I was leading. I was honestly trying, I mean, because he, Obama's a progressive president, right? He's not like icy on gay rights. I mean, he was at first, but so when it was my turn to see him, like we did a little business as usual. And then it was just kind of the last minute he was there and I literally just hit the counter and I just said, equal rights for gay people. <laughs> and in the pictures you can see he's signing the receipt, right? And uh-huh. he just looks up at me and goes, are you gay? Which is not a normal question. No. Like, and and uh-uh. nobody really asks that anymore. Yeah. And junior high people would ask that because they wanted to kick my ass. You <laughs> know what I mean? But typically nobody really just follows up with that. Yeah. And luckily, I have a few sassy, canned responses to that. And he asked me if I was gay, and I said, only when I'm having sex, (laughs) which I honestly can't believe. And if Uh you look at the pictures, I am turning around going, like, with my mouth open because Uh I can't believe I just just said that. And he's laughing. And there's a great picture from the statesman where he's got his, like, hand on his head, and he's just eyes closed, laughing. And then he brought his fist to me, which is a very, uh, his kind of thing to yeah. like for a fist bump. And when that happened, all the cameras in the room just went click, 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 click. And it was just like, oh, that must have been a thing. <laughs> and then 30, and then he leaves, everything goes back to normal. Mm-hmm. And then like 30 minutes later, a customer comes up to me. He's like, you're all over the internet. And by the time I got home, it was, I mean, 24 hours later, I was, on the BBC News, I was on CNN, I was in the papers in Germany, in Denmark, wow. in Belgium. I had friends. Progressive in, countries, by the way. Thank you, <laughs> yes, who were like, because it was a joke, you know what yeah. I mean? It was a total joke yeah. and a statement. Mm-hmm. And I'm, hindsight or just reflecting on it, it's like five words, only when I'm having sex, right? Is that five? I don't know. But that was all it took. And I, I, made yeah. a mark or something yeah. happened, but it was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I usually am not super, uh, I don't want to say like open, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just, I'm just kind of 
I'm not like super out, I guess I would say. Yeah. And my friend was like, so you, you keep it low, low key <laughs> until the present <laughs> comes in exactly. and then you just decide to blow the roof off the joint with it. I'm like, well, <laughs> I certainly did. I mean, it's the worst hair day I've ever had. Oh. And it's a picture that went around the world, <laughs> but, uh, I'm beyond proud of, yeah. of that moment for sure. So funny because I'm thinking as you're telling this elaborate, beautifully constructed story, <laughs> how in the past we talked about how you like the short, short, short. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you are skilled and gifted at telling a story. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of context to that story yeah. that needs to kind of be prefaced yeah, before yeah. I just come out with like, yeah. gay sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was remarkable. I mean, it was just, I mean, I still yeah. cannot believe it. Yeah. And like, I had a friend who was in Denmark. I didn't see him till the fall. And he was like, you were in the paper, like lit your photo. There was an article. I couldn't read it because it wasn't in English. <laughs> so you were in the paper. I was like, that's insane. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's nuts. Yeah. And you can go to Austin.com where you did a write up about that experience. Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, uh, that was honestly that particular article. Mm -hmm. I got to say a lot of stuff um, in that mm -hmm. that I think was good backup to just the actual story, yeah. Um, yeah. just to further the the cause, if you will. Yeah. Lots of people like to say I'm the reason that gay marriage is legal. Oh, <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, I don't know Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but <laughs> I'm sure she heard about me. You're now officially my most famous interview guest. <laughs> oh, thank ever. you. Oh, thank you. It's, it could all go at a flash in a pan. You know, I feel like I'm just some like tired meme from 2014. Oh no, <laughs> no. God, it's only two years. It's it went f kind of fast. Yeah. It well, went. yeah, 24 hours, and you're in everybody's crazy. <laughs> the crown jewel was I was a feature in Butt Magazine, and that is like <laughs> I called my mom. My mom. <laughs> I'm gonna be in Butt Magazine. She's like, what is it? How did that conversation go? Oh my Christ. We, we, there were a lot of email chains uh -huh. with family because it was just the articles were just e everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of the same. It was the Austin Chronicle article, basically. Mm -hmm. And then people just copy pasted it on every kind sure. of website. And so in the middle of that, I was like, I'm gonna be a Butt Magazine. Warning, do not go to the website unless you like grainy pictures of European men taken from beneath. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Lots of undershots. Uh -huh. How would you say that? How would you say that? Uh -huh. Looking up. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of <laughs> genitals from the from the ground view. Yeah. And me. <laughs> But not from that view. No, not, not at all. Bump. Precisely. <laughs> but even that, but magazine, I met, I met David Mills, who's an English comedian, and I got London gigs out of that. So oh, just that's kind of. That's the connection. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and even that was a, a great interview. Uh -huh. That was really fun. Yeah. Um, we got to kind of be internationally faggy with each other. <laughs> like, see how, where if we meet in the middle kind uh -huh. of a thing. But I mean, I just, it's, it's you, I guess nobody ever knows what's going to happen. No, I mean, it's like, what's, what's that word? Uh, kismet? Totally. Where it's like some random thing could just change the course of your... What's funny is the coworker who was actually standing next to me uh -huh. for the whole entire Obama thing mm -hmm. is in zero photos. <sighs> so even that to me is like, yeah, I could How have is been that possible it's with just, all that press. Like you said, he isn't in a single shot and it's, it's remarkable because I hogged the whole thing, <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. But I, again, and the other thing, I think I talked about this on the last show, but the, like, the Icelanders who were like, why are you staying? That was, the Obama thing happened a week later. So I'm uh, in another country telling people yeah. that I want to, that's why I'm doing this. And I mean, it was maybe 10 days later mm -hmm. that that happened. Yeah. I was like, well, at least I'm honest. <laughs> at least yeah. I meant what I said. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I don't know. It, it doesn't get any, if that's my peak. Yeah. If that's if that's the best I can do, I'm I'm pretty happy with that for sure. Very. Well, I think there's more, Daniel. Thank you. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Any other presidents I can assault verbally? <laughs> uh, gosh, it's hard to hard to ask follow up questions after that. Awesome ask me story. anything. Because I mean kind of had a cool experience uh have you done any cool shows in this past year 
I mean, the comedy seance was one of the best things. I got to go to, like I said, London mm-hmm. and do shows. Yeah. Um, thankfully, there's a lot of really good Austin shows going around yeah. that are like really exciting. Um, I've done some New Orleans things, but really the, I mean, Moon Tower, Moon Tower, Moon Tower, mm-hmm. just like blessed to get that. I feel yeah. like every time, but, or not every time, but the times I have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's funny. It's something people know. And it definitely benefited me, and I got stuff out of yeah. it. You know what I mean? But comedians will introduce me as that. Uh-huh. They'll be like, the guy that fist bumped Obama, and it's crickets. Because uh-huh. no, it's not in anybody's yeah. consciousness yeah. necessarily anymore. You need a little bit more of a point of reference. Right. So I love it. They'll be like, please welcome the Obama guy. <laughs> and the artist is just looking at me like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> um, and I, sometimes I talk about it in stand-up. Yeah. But it's it doesn't land as a joke. Sort of just right. sounds like I'm tooting my own horn. Yeah. So it doesn't quite have the, like, it doesn't fit into what I'm talking about necessarily. Yeah. I um, Yeah, I didn't know it from the performances I've seen you do. And I just, it's from the research. Yeah. Um, well, it's there. If yeah. you ever want to, if you ever want some fun, find one of the old articles uh-huh. and read the comment section. Oh, God. It's I don't think I want to. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people either hope I have AIDS or hope I transferred AIDS to President Obama. Oh, God. It's insane. There's actually a Christian blog that's like, we don't like Daniel Webb. No. <laughs> it's on my website at the very bottom of my press oh. page. It says, you know, disliked by internet Christians. Oh, I did, did remember seeing that reference. There's the, uh, I didn't click realize it. it was, oh, There's my like gosh. a blog that's like, <laughs> we live in Lubbock and we hate Daniel Webb. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Mm. I'd hate a lot of things too if I was in Lubbock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> do you have some current shows that you're, you're I do. running? Um, I do. I don't know if I could say that one, so I'll come back to you. But I've got Moon Tower coming up in April. I cannot wait for that. I get to do Haterade. Do you know that show? Uh It's a roast show. Okay. We're roasting Forever 21. Uh (laughs) They pick weird stuff. They roasted Uh Little Debbie. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Who who could hate Little Debbie? Well, exactly. Uh That's that's the challenge. (laughs) Um, I get to host for Rachel Feinstein. Or Feinstein, excuse me, Feinstein. Um, And the Stand Up Empire, which was KLRU PBS taping. They're trying to maybe get like a road show or something. Nice. So this year I really got to get out of town mm-hmm. and go, go, go. Yeah. So I'm just going to try and do a little New York, LA. Um, but like I said, I've kind of been bootlegging myself all year mm-hmm. and I'm going to try to whip all that together and have what a little bootlegging mean? like recording myself in shabby. Uh, audio circumstances oh. and trying to like get like a ramshackle, uh-huh. like a proper, uh, product, I guess you uh-huh. could say, um, just to have a center, you know what I mean? Cause if you're just a live performer, there can be just this kind of nebulous, mm-hmm. not a, ethereal kind of like, there's nothing on paper. Right. Um, but yeah, it, March, April, May are looking real busy and uh, this summer I really want to get out of town. Yeah. So. Um, I'm excited. I'm very, very fortunate uh-huh. to have stuff on my plate. Are you thinking that you're going to stay in Austin? I am always conflicted with that. Yeah. Because how long have you been in Austin? I've been in well, I went to school, left, and just jumped at an opportunity to come back. I've been back eight years. Okay, I can't imagine leaving. I mean, as far as Texas goes, this is it. Yeah. I've told exactly. my parents, I'm like, when y'all get old and sick, you, I'm not moving back. Mm-hmm. You are coming down here and I'll take care of you. Yeah. Um, I'm always conflicted with the industry in Austin mm-hmm. because when I moved here, it was music is about to pop and that hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. And the film industry is coming here and that kind of hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's here, but it's like they outsource everything. Yeah. And if you're trying to get attention or paid work, uh, the industry is in LA, Chicago, and New York, and that's just the way it is. However, Austin's comedy scene is actually, I cannot believe people move here for comedy. Yeah. That blows my mind. So I'm conflicted as to whether I should wait around mm-hmm. for another industry to kind of develop or notice us. Yeah. But I'm like, name a famous Austin band besides Spoon and Dead Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> no disrespect to any yeah. Austin. Like, the sword yeah. is a great export. Like, we've got a lot of really good stuff, but it's like, yeah. what, double trouble? Yeah. You know, it's, um, 
but I don't want to live in traffic and mm. s- snow in New York mm-hmm. will keep me at home. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just <Yeah>. stay indoors. <laughs> I have a dog, you know, and that's a real, yeah. that'll kind of hold you in place. Yeah. So if he dies, I might, oh. I mean, I'm not looking forward to it, but that might change things. <laughs> But I don't know. This is a, I. I think I still have a lot of learning to yeah. do in stand up, and you know, and if you I'm, travel for those festivals or yeah. do little tours here and there. Totally, gas yeah. is cheap right now, so yeah, you know what I mean. Why not just hit the road? Exactly. But yeah, I'm. I'm not. I haven't. I just signed my lease again. I just renewed, so I'll be here a year more at least. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Are there specific things that? Uh, okay, specifically things you want to promote. <gasps> Uh, what for comedy up, stuff like that? Coming up. Um, I mean, really, I'm just so excited to be a part of uh, Moon Tower yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I'm. What else am I doing? The funniest person in Austin. I'm going to go into again, which Yay. is a huge competition. Yeah. I'm far less nervous or concerned about mm-hmm. doing well this year, so I just kind of want to go watch everybody. Yeah. Um, I, I believe I'm developing a comedy show with a club in like June, July. That I get to kind of curate nice. and I'm really excited about uh-huh. that because I, I want to do really good and I want to, I would like to, like people have brought me to their shows mm-hmm. and showcased me in really flattering ways. Mm-hmm. And I, it's high time I start doing that yeah. uh, for other people too. Yeah. So uh, hopefully I'll have more details on that. Um, later. Yay. So yeah, June, July, I hope I'll have a, a really fun show coming up. Very good. We will keep an eye on the secret show. Thank you. The secret show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like to wrap up with a closing question. Okay. And we're back to the one word. Okay. Question. One word to describe your future. Mm. Um, okay. One word to describe my future. How many? How many? <laughs> how many chances can I have? <laughs> one word to describe my future. I hope it's. I mean. I hope I stay lucky, but that's kind of a dumb answer. Um, <laughs> domestic is that <laughs> is that too boring of an answer? <laughs> Honestly, I would say um, I would say tour. The only reason I really wanted to play music and the exact same thing I can do uh-huh. with uh, comedy is be a live performer that yeah. gets to just go all over the place. Mm-hmm. And I'm not looking for fancy stuff, but <laughs> tour was the goal. Yeah. You know, 15 years ago, it is still my goal. I would love to be somebody who can just go all over the place. I usually pretty much wrap up after that, but the fact that you just said that makes me want to ask one thing that hasn't been addressed. You saying the tour and you saying the music and the comic performance makes me think, do you just totally feed off the energy of your audience? And that's what it is that attracts you to that those performing 100 percent. yeah it's a remarkable feeling music is weird because you can play it and people can like it Mm -hmm. and you might never know you know what i mean Mm -hmm. sometimes i'm at a show and i'm having an amazing experience Mm -hmm. and i'm still and silent you know what i mean and if you're rolling doing stand-up and you do great it could be five minutes it could be a killer 20 minute 30 minute Mm -hmm. um but i have yet to find something that satisfying when you have a room full of people that are happy with you yeah and essentially that's kind of what it is you're just trying to make sure they're like happy Mm -hmm. with you it's like being a waitress it's like you just you just want a good tip you don't want to leave (laughs) you know what i mean it's like but absolutely that's an amazing feeling and I don't think it was cheesy if you had wanted to pick lucky because that was the word that I was actually <laughs> thinking. I'm like, I think that same word is going to apply. I, I, it's, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I have been lucky and I don't want to jinx that by saying that, but I, yeah, it, it, I would love for things to just keep going. And it's not just, I mean, I don't want you to think that it's all luck either. I mean, luck. Plus your hard work. Thank, you've thank you. have been busting your ass. Thank you. I, yeah. I, if you saw my ass, it's busted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm your target audience for that. <laughs> I think we've established that. <laughs> Absolutely. Only when I'm having sex. <laughs> that is a perfect way. <laughs> 
Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents The Current with our guest, Daniel Webb. Do you want to tell us where we can find you on social media? Yes, I am at thedanielwebb.com, and I am at I am immaturely on Twitter at at Ruben Boobies. Follow him <laughs> and his adventures. <laughs> Listen to part one for more information about how Daniel got to be the comedic genius that you heard today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, The Current, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com. Give us a follow on Twitter, at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. <laughs>